Hello, this is Jason Michael Ejeski. I am the National Sales Manager for Safe Air Dalco, which is a fully owned subsidiary of Naylor Industries. What I would like to cover today are some of the details about the industrial damper market, starting with an economic overview of the market, how this market is structured, moving on to how these products differ from our commercial offering and their design and scope, and how they can be tailored to fit their individual applications, and finally proceeding through our product line and how we can provide solutions that can help you take advantage of the many opportunities this market presents. This webinar is intended for representatives who are familiar with the commercial side of the business. Generally, by that, I mean the plan and spec work, but who have a varying degree of intimacy with design, build, industrial products and would like to know more. The industrial damper market may perhaps be best understood through its differences to the commercial market. Whereas the commercial market is typically used for HVAC applications, that is applications most concerned with aspects of human comfort, the industrial market is more concerned with process control applications. Sometimes these overlap with an industrial damper installed to allow man safe operation or to control air quality or pollution. But generally the purpose of an industrial damper is to optimize the performance of the system or process itself by providing a greater degree of control or regulation. To accomplish this, we start to think in terms of the operating parameters of the process to generate the proper damper solution that will deliver at minimum the required performance. As these tend to be more rigorous than what is seen in commercial applications, so must the dampers themselves be more robustly fabricated. The market for these industrial products varies from year to year, but typically amounts to a footprint of roughly $50 million per year. The opportunities are abundant for both new installation work as well as a significant amount of replacement of existing infrastructure as facilities are upgraded and industrial processes are modernized. Particularly relevant to us are the new environmental regulations that serve to force along the upgrading of existing facilities, perhaps more quickly than industry would naturally. Industrial damper products can certainly both enable and improve process economy and control in response to changing regulations, allowing our customers to stay ahead in the game. While damper technology is tried and tested, it also meshes well with modern automated computer control systems and is an integral part of a complete package. As we proceed through the damper models, we will highlight some of the most common uses for each type of damper. The selection of the type of damper to perform a particular function is the single most important decision that will affect the reliable long-term operation of the system. Industrial dampers may be categorized generally by the type of function they are designed for, and here are some of the most common types. Heavy duty control dampers are used for process control. Heavy duty round control dampers are also used for process control, but tend to be single blade or butterfly type dampers. Isolation dampers are used for sealing off of a particular area of ductwork for either quality or safety purposes. Backdraft and pressure relief dampers are used for pressure control and regulation and also to ensure the movement of air in one direction only. Diverter or T-dampers are generally dampers used to split or redirect flow, and this flow tends to be hot gases. Blast or smoke dampers are heavy duty life safety and blast control. Vane inlet dampers are dampers that we use to pre-spin the air entering a fan and thereby economize fan operations. In addition to these typical categories of industrial dampers, we also have more exotic damper applications as well that require exacting materials and designs to satisfy the performance requirements needed. You see a small subset of these here. You will notice here that we have some overlap with the materials we use in industrial dampers and those typically found in our commercial products. But the specialization demanded by industrial processes means special materials are needed from time to time as well. Our industrial damper products are available in a variety of materials, including galvanized steel, galvanized steel, aluminum, 304 and 316 stainless steel, carbon steel, and high temperature exotic steel as well. The choice of material and material thickness range from 26 gauge to 3 eighths of an inch thick, depending on the system variables, static pressure, air velocity, damper size, corrosiveness, temperature, and other considerations. Durability and reliability are key to the effectiveness of the overall process, and in many ways these depend on the ability to inhibit corrosion. To this end, we offer a range of finishing options to choose from. Shop fine for field painting, 
AMA 2604 and AMA 2605 Powdera powder coat, which we apply in-house. These are equivalent to 50% and 70% fluoropolymer finishes, respectively. Kynar wet fluoropolymer equal to the powder coat, baked epoxy, and ZRC cold galvanizing compound. These somewhat standard finishing options are complemented by more specialized ones for more extreme requirements and environments. Stainless steel weld passivization, sandblasting surface preparation to the required specification, and temper coat paint, which increases our limits to accommodate more stringent temperature demands. Our industrial damper products come with a variety of robust heavy gauge metal frames constructed of galvanized steel, galvanized steel, aluminum, 304 and 316 stainless, and the exotic steels as well, in varying thicknesses depending on the air velocity, pressure, and environment. Most models feature a channel frame with formed two inch by one quarter inch flanges pre-drilled with either custom or shop standard bolt holes, although we provide them undrilled as well. Shop drawings and measurements are key in coordinating custom features. We can vary the height of the flange as well as the overall thickness of the frame to match job requirements. For instance, one of our newer products is a three inch thin line frame, medium duty industrial control damper. It's the 1500 series. It allows for a more economical solution since it requires relatively less material while providing control for systems with significantly more pressure and flow requirements than comparable commercial systems. On the other end of the spectrum, we can customize the depth of our frame on our industrial butterfly dampers to ensure the blade will not protrude out of the frame in any ways, resulting in thicknesses of up to 60 inches. In most cases, however, our industrial dampers use an 8 inch deep channel frame with a thickness between 14 gauge and 1 quarter inch. For blade types, there are three common blade types that we use, with each suited to a particular application. V-blades, airfoils, and single or butterfly blades. V-blades are of a single thickness that can vary in response to the pressure and flow requirements of the system, with thicker blades able to handle more static pressure and airflow velocity. The main benefit of a V-blade arrangement is economy of design and build. It uses less material and takes less time to build than an equivalent airfoil blade. Airfoil blades are typically used when the demands of the system are more stringent. Airfoil blades have several advantages over V-blades. By being double-walled, they're intrinsically stronger than the single-walled V-blade for a given thickness. They tend to maintain their shape under severe pressure and flow better than a V-blade. That is, they do not warp. They have less static pressure loss across the surface than a V-blade. And finally, they permit a tighter steel when the damper is closed, everything else being equal. Single-bladed butterfly dampers come in a variety of thicknesses and have blade supports to handle high pressures and velocities as well. They are laser cut for your accuracy to ensure they fit snug in their rings. The major benefit of the butterfly damper is the ability for ultra-tight seals, far beyond the range of what a multi-bladed damper is capable of. With our products, this advantage has allowed us to develop and certify a bubble-tight, ultra-low leakage damper that meets the highest standards and is suitable for use in zero leakage systems such as water treatment facilities or for the containment of toxic gases in laboratories. Now that we have covered the frames and blades, before we begin going through the individual damper models and applications, I would like to survey the other key components of the damper design that must be suited to the individual application and environment. These are the axles, blade seals, and bearings. They significantly impact the overall performance of the damper in the field and must be selected accordingly for reliable and safe operation. The main determinants of these are going to be characteristics of the airflow passing through the damper, that is temperature, pressure, velocity, and composition. Each is critical, but as you can tell from the slide, temperature is paramount. The material of the damper and its components must be able to handle the conditions it will be controlling. We have three materials that we can use for the axles, plated steel, stainless steel, and aluminum. If we know we have a higher temperature in the duct, generally we will approach this situation with stainless steel axles. Plated steel will work well under temperatures closer to quote unquote room comfortable temperatures. Aluminum is best suited for environments where we have a chemical limitation in which we cannot use ferrous material or in colder conditions where steel will potentially become brittle. The diameter of the axle is going to depend on the blade thickness, which we know is itself determined by the velocity and pressure of the system. We can go anywhere from one inch to three inch thick on the axles. 
Seals can make or break the performance of the damper in the field and will be determined by your performance requirements. Our industrial products come with optional blade and jam seals. Jam seals are usually made from stainless steel and prevent leakage between the ends of the blade and the damper frame. In cases where the duct medium must be contained with zero leakage into the surrounding environment, axle seals options such as double gland stuffing boxes, which is a packing gland impregnated with graphite, and O-ring axle seals ensure that there is isolation of a dirty airstream. Blade seals come in a variety of materials dependent primarily on the leakage requirements, the composition of the duct medium, and the duct temperature. They can be mechanically fastened to the blade, secured with adhesive, tadpole sealed, or secured with a bolted ring in the case of our butterfly dampers. The materials range from neoprene for mild temperatures to silicone with EPDM ethylene propylene diene monomer, fabric, and ceramic tadpoles all the way up to 1600 degrees. We have also worked with santoprene radiation resistant seals before on dampers in intended for nuclear projects for the Department of Defense. Bearing and bearing placement is also highly temperature dependent. Generally, for temperatures above 400 degrees, you want outboard bearings to allow some separation between the bearing and the damper frame, which grows hot from the duct medium. Otherwise, even using external bearings to isolate them from the airstream, which all of our industrial models do, along with the operating linkage, might not prevent bearing seas from high temperatures. Choice of bearing material itself depends on temperature, corrosivity of the duct medium, and velocity specifications. A quick overview of our standard offerings is on the slide. Our standard offering directly from the submittal tends to be a stainless steel press sleeve fit, either pressed in the damper frame or bolted externally. Bushing types are common also. For many industrial applications, especially with dirty airflow, we will see relubricable ball bearings bolted external to the frame with seals to protect the bearings from the environment and the accessibility to field relubricate and maintain. Adding stuffing boxes to our low and high temp ball bearings further increases our temperature ratings as well. We have worked with plastic bearings and applications that require spark resistant dampers and UHMW polyethylene for food and medical applications. The most important consideration about choice of axle seals and bearing arrangements is that they can take a relatively small number of industrial models and in effect multiply them, allowing them to be suited to a larger number of different industrial applications. As we have seen, the operating parameters are going to influence each component of the damper. Pressure, flow rate, temperature maxima and minima, and the duct medium are the starting points, followed by performance requirements such as leakage and pressure drop. Once we have this information, we can design the proper damper for the individual application. Our heavy-duty industrial control dampers, multi-bladed, rectangular, and square, begin with the 3-inch deep-framed 1500 series and progress into the heavier 1900, AR, and AA series. Each series of damper comes in either V-blade or airfoil blade, with blade action both parallel and opposed. Parallel-bladed dampers have their blades oriented to open and close at the same time, same angle, and same direction, and are generally used for full open or full closed operation with the best control of airflow near their fully closed or fully open positions. Common applications of parallel bladed dampers are gas turbines, scrubbers, fan inlets, and oxidizers, where on-off operation is at a premium. Opposed blade actions mean that each adjacent blade will move in an opposite direction from the blade next to it, allowing for modulation of the airflow as well as on-off operation. This allows for greater control and adjustment over the volume of air throw through the entire operating range. Common applications are fan discharge, power generation, air filtration, and process control. Lower leakage is attainable with opposed blade orientation since the blades will overlap when closed, and more torque will be applied to the blades when closed as well. Single-bladed round control dampers are also called butterfly or wafer dampers and are typically used when we have round duct or where there is a premium of isolation, flow control, and low leakage. These are our models HTR series, 1989, 1990, and 1995. Having only one blade means we can achieve a much tighter seal as there are fewer opportunities for leakage versus a multi-bladed damper. In addition, we can work with much higher pressures and airflow with a single-bladed damper than is possible with a multi-bladed damper. 
Diverter dampers, or T-dampers, used commonly to direct, redirect high temperature gases from turbines, are two round isolation dampers in a T arrangement with a common feeder pipe. Our experience with these types of round controls dampers has resulted in our successful testing and certification of our model HTRBT bubble tight damper that achieves the lowest leakage measurable. Round control and isolation dampers work best in toxic environments such as wastewater treatment plants, chemical plants and laboratories, flue glass, cleanup applications, ductwork maintenance safety, stack isolation, and environmental control facilities where you generally need a high degree of isolation of the duct medium. We have listed on our website under our industrial control dampers a brief summary of blade styles, minimum and maximum sizes, and maximum velocities for reference and selection. The second major class of industrial damper are backdraft and pressure relief dampers, which are dampers designed to permit airflow in a desired direction while at the same time preventing any reverse airflow in the opposite direction. These may be used either on the intake or exhaust of a fan or blower. Heavy duty fans generate a large amount of airflow velocity and back pressure. The back pressure can result in fan backspin and damage unless it is prevented by means of a backdraft damper. Backdraft dampers operate using a counterweight to ensure that they are closed until the induced force resulting from a change in pressure can overcome the force of gravity on the counterweight to open the damper, which is why they're sometimes referred to as gravity dampers. A pressure relief damper is a counterweighted backdraft damper that has an adjustable start open pressure. When there is a decrease in differential pressure, the damper is designed to open. What this accomplishes is a relatively constant pressure in the system, even as the airflow fluctuates. That is, it allows control of the pressure and for this reason is commonly used as a safety device. When there is an overpressure or significant negative pressure situation, this type of damper will open and relieve it. These dampers are used in environments where there tends to be a need for exhaust of generated gases. Steel mills, utility plants, and refineries are common applications. These dampers come in all three of our standard blade arrangements, single skin V-blade, double skin airfoil, and single blade, and the blade style may be selected in response to the performance requirements and system conditions. The double skinned and thicker blades are generally capable of handling a greater amount of pressure and airflow with the added benefit of reduced pressure drop as well, much as the same way as in our control dampers. For multi-bladed dampers, the operator is a counterweight, as we mentioned, located external to the damper frame for ease of calibration and maintenance without having to access the inside of the ductwork. This counterweight may be adjusted by adding weights and by moving the weights up and down in the bracket as well. It is linked to all of the damper blades to ensure complete opening and closure of the entire damper. On our website, we list each of our industrial backdraft damper products, along with their maximum static pressure and air flow velocity capabilities to ease in model selection. For multi-bladed, we use our SH and 1905 series, and our HTR backdraft dampers are our round single-bladed backdraft and pressure relief dampers, and they are capable of handling up to 40 inches of static pressure and comes in sizes up to 60 inches in diameter. Inlet vane dampers are dampers designed to economize a fan or blower installation by pre-spinning the air on the inlet side in the same direction as the fan spins. They allow for complete control of the relationship between flow and pressure of a fan or blower setup. Essentially, by pre-spinning the air, they relieve the fan of some of its work, and this leads to both short-term and long-term efficiency cost savings, with the fan operating costs lowered and long-term maintenance costs decreased as well. Our models are selected dependent on the maximum static pressure, duct temperature, and velocity, with bearing type and blade and axle thicknesses custom matched to the job at hand. We can go from one half inch diameter axles with stainless steel bearings with thrust washers to one inch axles and two bolt flange bearings to accommodate the requirements of the system. And these are typically mounted directly to the inlet of the fan. They additionally provide complete control and regulation over ventilation. Actuator selection is of critical importance to ensure reliable operation day in and day out. Actuator output must be determined by considering the effects of operating pressure and temperature, 
dead load, friction, and airflow. The choice of an actuator for an industrial damper can be one of the most critical considerations of the entire project. They are typically custom selected for the specific application at hand. On our pricing software, usually we handle industrial models operators by offering manual options and a few quote unquote stock electric and pneumatic actuators only. This way, our software will allow you to select all of the various features and components of the damper while consulting with the factory for the exact actuator selection and pricing. We do this to save headaches for everyone. Certainly, the selection of actuator merits a second set of aids in most industrial cases. To begin to cover the variety of operators available through our many manufacturing partners, I will quickly go over each actuator type as well as some of the basic accessories. Let's begin with manual. Manual operators use human power, often with a mechanical multiplier, to open, close, and position a damper. The simplest is a manual quadrant, which is a lever that is welded to the drive axle, allowing the axle to be turned. Industrial quadrants come with locking mechanisms to ensure the damper remains in the proper position. Hand wheel and chain wheel manual operators ensure easy operation of the damper with a locking mechanism as well, either through chain pull and pulley operation or direct drive to the axle. Worm gear operators are used for heavy torque conditions where the multiplication of manual import force is necessary. The worm gear has the added benefit of self-locking. Electric. Electric actuators use an electric motor to move the damper blades and of course rely on an electric power supply to operate. It is important to consider all of the aspects of the power supply available when selecting an electric actuator. Voltage, frequency, and phase, as well as the environment the damper will be in. Explosive, spark-free, wet, dirty, exposed to hazardous materials, etc. Pneumatics. Pneumatic actuators use a supply of compressed air to move the damper blades. They are an alternative to electric or manual operators and in many cases are preferred in industrial application because they supply a higher torque at both a lower initial cost and maintenance cost over time than electrics. They furthermore tend to have a smaller footprint than most equally powerful electrics and do not require a potentially hazardous power supply to operate. All of the operator choices, manual, electric, and pneumatic, generally come down to one of two modes of operation, two position or modulating. Two position is where you require the damper to either be fully opened or fully closed. For complete shutoff of airflow and use with butterfly or parallel bladed damper, Whereas modulating allows for intermediate positioning in response to an outside input signal, such as in situations where the volume of airflow needs to be regulated as with opposed blade dampers. Spring return and power open, power close are the two most common actuator categories. Spring return is important because the damper will return to a preset fail safe position in the case of power loss. Life safety products commonly use this type of actuator as it provides assurance that the damper will be positioned in such a way as to minimize danger if an emergency happens. If you do not need a fail safe power open slash power close will result and the damper remaining in its current position in the case of power loss. Actuators can come with a variety of accessories to complement and expand their capabilities in an industrial application. Position indicators will relay the blade position, opened, closed, and in between, to a central computer control or station for real-time monitoring of the system. Limit switches can supply a similar blade indication and can be offered with hazardous environment ratings as well. Solenoid valves and positioners can control a modulating actuator using an input signal for precise operation, and in conjunction with position indicators can provide a complete real-time and slash or moderated control using automation. For vulnerable barrel operations, weather and explosion-proof housings are available to protect against the effect of extreme environments. For fire suppression, we have experience in mounting Walter Kitty trips to heavy-duty industrial control dampers, allowing for immediate closure of the damper in response to pressure inputs. We have experience in mounting and testing hundreds of different types of actuators for a variety of exacting environments, and our contacts in the industry allow us to fulfill your needs confidently and economically with full engineering support. 
We have a great deal of confidence in the products that we custom engineer for our customers for use in industrial applications. We follow all relevant standards during our engineering fabrication process, from the material selection and quality to the bearings, the welding we do in-house, our in-house powder coat application line, and other finished applications, and our selection of operating equipment. Everything that we put into our product is tested for quality and performance before we ship it to our customers. Our engineers are uniquely involved with industrial orders as they progress through the shop. On most orders, we supply custom approval or reference drawings at no additional charge with the typical lead time of one to two weeks, as needed, prior to order release for confidence and coordination at all stages of production. From beginning to end, quote until shipment, we at Nailer Industries take a hands-on, can-do approach to leverage our expertise in designing, engineering, and fabricating unique solutions for our customers in the industrial market. I hope that you found this presentation to be informative and interesting. Unfortunately, we cannot go into a greater level of detail in this short amount of time. However, if you have any questions, please email or call your Nailer Regional Sales Manager. Thank you.